I'm able to finally release these tools with you. All right, how do you access them? Well, it is if you go check the school and again, be part of our school committee to get access to these. If you go to classroom, you will find this new class called Best AI Tools for Lawyers. And here it is. I'll provide the link to this in the chat, but I'm going to run you through this. So how to use this and not just don't get overwhelmed by it, but actually use this to advantage. All right. So on the left side are the categories. The good part is I categorized it and cleaned it up. This essentially, this came from this list that I put together. There was two lists that I have. One was in my bookmarks that I started building over 15 months ago. Little by little, as I was exposed, started saving them. Language models, work-related stuff, legal stuff, assistance, open AI, and all this stuff. Started compiling these, dwelled into these, and I was able to extract the best of the best, the ones that are actually are actually good, not just adding them to the list for the sake of just having the most. No, I want to make sure that every single one of these are actually usable and actually are good. It's all here. It took a lot of time to put these together and collect them and put them here. So please hope you get value from these. So I'm going to go through the categories and give me the rundown. You preview some of them, know, share with you what exists, what doesn't, some of the capabilities to know at least that this is supposed to be a resource. It's not something that you all of a sudden you go and use all 75 of these, but the there's 75 tools that are here, which is crazy. It's just meant to be used as a resource. That means whenever you have that problem or you have that need, that's where you go to the classroom, you click on this and you're just like, hey, I need to optimize my audio. Is there an AI tool that could do that? So it's a resource. So audio enhancements. Let me just share with you what exists. This is Adobe Enhanced Speech is the one is one of the ones that I've actually been using the most. The way that it works is you never going forward, you never have to worry about your audio quality anymore. Doesn't matter if you didn't record with a microphone or you recorded outside or you record on the beach. All you have to do is just drop this off into drop this video or audio off into into Adobe Enhanced Speech, and it will dramatically improve the audio. Let me show you an example. This is a video that I that just I got done this week, which is basically it's a video that as soon as a client is signed up, I want to co collect the documents from them. So why do I have to get somebody to go and provide the instructions? What if I create a landing page that basically has a video, has written instructions, and a button that goes to a form for me to collect the, uh, the documents. So this was the original video. Hi there, congratulations on taking the next step to resolve your car issues. We're here to protect your rights as a consumer and hold manufacturers accountable for their defective cars. So she didn't use an audio. So all I did because of this now. To get started, we need just a few documents from you. So let's walk through what we need. First up, we need your purchase contract or retail installment sales contract. This document is crucial, so make sure you provide clear images of all the pages. Never have to worry about audio quality ever again. So since a month ago, every video that comes my way, throw in here, takes like a minute. I click on download, bam. And yeah, it works really well. Let's move it forward. Next, and I'll be going into some more details. Some of it I'll just be brushing it to tell you that it exists. Text-to-speech, text-to-speech. You no longer have to read the script or say something if you don't want to. All you have to do is use this 11 Labs text-to-speech tool. All the, link, all the links, by the way, I shared with you here. If you just scroll down, you'll find that on the resources. Literally, by copy and pasting, whatever text that you have, you're able to get AI to go read that, whatever that is. You can use this for videos, faceless videos, ads, things, things like that. I remember about six months ago, I was looking to get a voiceover done. I went on Fiverr. I got a couple of offers for $150. There was a bunch of upsells that they cost like on average about $200. And I got, I ended up hiring two people again, $250 each. I'm like, wait a minute, why am I doing that? Let me just use 11 labs. I went and used 11 labs and it actually came out better and I ended up not even using the Fiverr versions. And I ended up using this free version of this AI generated voice and I used it for ads and I actually ended up doing well. So that is text to speech. There's translation, which I think ChatGPT already does it pretty well. So maybe this is not truly really necessary. And then also you may have seen ads for this tool called Air, which basically is an AI agent in, that basically speaks to potential clients. I've had a couple of my directors go and check this out. I think the feedback that I got is that it's right now it's very early. And because it's very early, they charge like a very, very high premium for it. I think it's licensed out for like, I think from what I heard, $25,000, which I think is an overkill. But I have a feeling that this over time, there'll be some competitors that'll come into the space and it'll be much cheaper. But just know that it is possible. You could build these AI agents that know your law firm 
you can at least go contact your leads for you and qualify your leads and maybe hand them off. Ideally, maybe get them signed up or even hand them off to a closer who can get them signed up. But that I would say is probably TBA to be announced about where we'll go. Bunch of billing and time tracking tools. I'm not going to go into details. Chatbots. We've explored Chatbase since a year ago, especially if you were at our conference. That's here for you. That's usually usually used for customer service or for chats for your website. I don't think most people need it. It's 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 a good for like a good internal tool for your team potentially. But I would say ChatGPT's GPTs has replaced the need for having a dedicated chat chat bot versus you could just build it out in 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 ChatGPT. Again, I'm relatively going to go through these relatively fast. As questions come up, uh, feel free to ask. I see, I do see the chats as they come in, but I just want to make sure that you guys get exposed to all the tools. And again, this is all here for you to be able to use later. Content and blogging. And if anybody is doing SEO, content at scale is the right tool for you. About four months ago, we had one of the one of the people from content at scale come and do a demo for us. This is what I use for one or two of my law firms. It works pretty well. So if you're doing SEO, check that out. There's a bunch of other other tools, whether it be translators, word AI, detector, detectors, which is spelled wrong. But all that stuff is here for you. Anything that comes with content and blogging. Now some of the legal related stuff, contract drafting and review, Spellbook, which I'm sure you've probably seen their ads, Henchman, which actually we, we got a demo at ABA Tech Show, Luminance, Lanch, Ebrevia, Brevia, Kira, Robin AI, LexCheck, a lot of different options. I don't have any insight about which is the best one. It seems like to me, Spellbook seems to be like the most popular one. So that is, if you are into contracts and do business law, you might definitely want to request a couple of demos from a couple of these tools. Data extraction. This is huge. This is somewhat my world. I'm somewhat pursuing something in this realm, which is extracting data, AI using AI, being able to extract data from particular forms that you have or your client's for, uh, client's data. And for the data to be analyzed by AI and something for it to be done or drafted. Sensible, I've done my research, is the best tool for data extraction. I've talked to them. They're a great company. Seems like the right tool. If you're looking to do data extraction, imagine you have car accident reports or if you're lemon law car repair orders or things like that. It's able to extract that data by uploading it. And now with AI, you're able to get draft, automatically draft things. There's also another competitor called Dakugami, and that is those options. Demand letter generation. Demand letters. The most popular one is even up. I heard it's good, but it's a little pricey. But I think it's, it's, if it was me, I would probably try it out and give it to my best demand writer VA to see how it goes. Give them 30, 60 days and let me, and ask them, hey, how much do you think this saves you? How much time does it save you? And based on evaluate if it's worth it or not. And also obviously it depends on the quality. I think with all these AI tools, it's not meant to be used as the final draft. It's supposed to be like, it's supposed to get you 80% of the way there. There are other also competitors. Yeah. And and yeah, and if you do have experience about these, please let me know in the chat so we could, I could share that feedback back to you. Karen says, Spellbook is pretty good. Karen, thank you for sharing that. Joe says, Even Up is pretty good. Great. Again, if you're a pretty lawyer, definitely worth at least booking a demo and seeing what the quality is like and what's the value is there. I would assume the value is there. They know what they're doing, right? They, they're able to price it correctly so that you get value from this. So it's a win-win. Fall one demands AI, clear brief and pro plaintiff are the four companies that I know of that do demand letter generation. Diagramming, diagramming for maybe potentially for my litigation lawyers, check out these three tools, Visio, Cliffy, eDraw Max, all AI enabled dry diagramming tools. Check that out. I don't know too much about it, but I know they do exist. Discovery, if you do discovery, Square Tech seems to be the best tool for that right now. I've heard good things about it. Again, if you do a lot of discoveries, Squire Tech is probably the right option for you to at least get a demo. Again, all the links are here for you. By the way, I took a lot of, me and my team took a lot of time to try to add a video demo in here for you. The best video we could find to show you how it works. That's here for you. Again, if you want to go into any of these in detail, that's here for you. And also I was able to pull out what it does. What are the pros? What are the cons? And who's ideal for all here for you? So you can quickly get a summary if it's the right option for you. And then if it is, I would click on it, explore it further, book a demo and give it a try. With all these tools, I always recommend at least very least book a demo to see what it's like. And then giving it 30, 60 days to evaluate whether you use it or not. If you use it, then the value is 99% there. What else? Document analysis and research. There's a bunch of these tools, but it feels like to me at this point, it seems a little bit too early. But I think the, the practice 
and the experience that you get from using these tools, I think is even more important than the value, potential value that you get right now. So I highly recommend if you're in these fields, or you need to do some, a lot of document analysis, things like that. Become familiar with it, with these at least one of these tools, whether it be AI Lawyer, a Clear Brief. I've heard a lot about Legalize, Atlaw, Lawdroid. Some of these are probably much better than others. Again, I don't have any particular information about which one is actually good. But with every single one of these, when I did my research to pull it out, there are at least viable options for you. So document analysis and research. And as I'm sharing this with you, maybe take notes on which which one you know you would like to explore deeper and take some time, maybe schedule some time over the weekend or on Sunday or Monday to, to dig deeper. Image optimization, the number one best tool for that is Midjourney. I got into Midjourney early over a year ago. It's a little bit complicated. It requires a demo. You probably have to watch a YouTube video about how to use it. It requires you getting on Discord and then you have to add yourself to this Discord channel and then you have to, there's a very particular way to use it. If you learn how to do it, it's pretty cool. I used it. I used AI images for ads. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Just to give you a little representation of these ads, I'll quickly show you. Pretty funky, unique type of images that could sometimes do well. This one, I think, was our top performing ad for Lemon Law for some time. Pretty funny, et cetera, et cetera. And it can also be used for social media posts, especially obviously for unique and for sending out. And as I said, the third part is it's just fun to be able to, you know, be a little creative and come up with these unique settings and unique images. So that is the right tool. Uh, that's the right tool for it. There's also a text remover. If you want to remove text from a certain image, um, you can use that tool. Upscaling images. If you have a small image, you would like to make it much bigger with uh, good pixels, then that's how you, it's called upscaling. That's how you will to do that. You could also blur pictures. If you have a, your client sends you a very blurred picture of a car accident, you could potentially use this to potentially, I'm not sure whether actually, I don't, I don't think there's any, I don't know what the rules are about maybe using AI to edit an image. But you might want to, you know, inter interesting tool to do that. And then Adobe Firefly is a graphic design tool, a little bit more creative stuff. And as Jamie shared, you can also use Canva to generate and optimize images with Canva. Yes, Canva Pro has some really good features for day-to-day, -day, so for social media posts that you'll to use. Thank you, Jen. And yes, please give me the feedback and things as I'm presenting. For intake, intaking. So this is something that I tried pursuing a year and a half ago. I dropped it because I saw so too many people doing it. And I'm like, I don't want to be in this red ocean of people doing it. So with this intaking, the objective is for AI to come and text your leads to qualify them. And if they qualify, my goal was to get them signed up and I actually went through the motions and actually signed up, I think about 80 clients, 70 to 80 clients that I was able to get signed up with AI. That got transformed. Most, most of the intake tools these days, it uses AI to be able to text the lead to get them booked on an appointment. So there's a tool called Go High Level, which is the backend of Legal Funnel CRM, which does that. It's not for all practice types. Also, you need to have enough leads for it to make sense. But ideally, if you can use this feature plus your intake manager, then that'll be the right way to do it. So we, that Legal Funnel CRM does have that capability. Uh, there's also a company that apparently does it for for calls again it might be one of those air companies where it might be the license might be too expensive maybe at this point but just know that 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 does exist stephanie says it's me you have to disclose if any image editing or manipulation correct stephanie yes if you do manipulate the images as i was thinking about on top of my head yeah you probably have to say hey i probably use ai yeah i don't know it's probably too early to know what the rules are regarding that but yeah i would assume so language models language models the top two right now are chat gpt4 and google Gemini. Both have their pros and cons. I, for the most part, 90% of the time still use ChatGPT4. However, if I'm looking to do research, I like Google Gemini more for research. So research related stuff, especially if it's tied to current, current events or current data, I use Google Gemini. Those most likely will be the top tools that you probably use. ChatGPT, obviously we are, a lot of our AI kind of teachings has been based on ChatGPT. Mike Smith got access to Gemini 1.5, which is the the most robust language model right now out for beta users. So Mike, if you have any insights about how that's going, let me know. But yeah, if you cannot go wrong with using either ChatGPT or Google Gemini. And I do have both of these. I highly I'd recommend having both of these in your bookmarks. So you're able to quickly access them. Bam, click on it and be able to quickly, as things come up throughout the day, ideally have it open. I have mine open for the most part throughout the day to be able to use at any time. So that's the two top tools. The other ones that you may have heard about is Claude. Claude, what they're known for is usually having, allowing you to upload and, and, and upload like longer documents. So if you have like a 60 page document, 
your sometimes ChatGPT may have a limitation. Claude has a bigger limit. So Claude is able to use Claude. And then there's also another one, a perplexity that also is another LLM that you're able to use. They all have the pros and cons. Again, based on my experience and based on what I use and what I've seen, ChatGPT and Google Gemini is the way to go.